you start to empower people who are at a lower level of the organization to even see themselves as like qualified or or as valuable as a potential leader and I know that is not like the sole solution to the pipeline problem but but I do think that at times maybe women more likely I know there's a lot of research about that women being less likely to pursue certain positions I imagine that may be true for people with other Mm -hmm. you know marginalized identities so do you have thoughts about how to help people who Mm -hmm. have been historically marginalized to feel empowered to step into or put themselves forward maybe more frequently for some of those roles Mm -hmm. yeah so I, i am always an advocate of when opportunity presents itself you take it through the door don't look at all the ways in which you're unqualified look at all the ways that you're qualified and walk through the door you never know what's going to happen but also taking opportunities to that may not necessarily translate into another position but get you a different experience so that even where things aren't equalized as far as training opportunities and other things that because you volunteered to be on this committee that no one else wanted to be on, you have learned a new skill or been seen in an, in an audience or people know that you can get a job done, then you're, you're creating your resume. You're not allowing system to marginalize you by you going ahead and saying, no, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to create my career path and being resilient enough to do that. And it does. And I think it takes others around you, encouraging you to do that. Like it takes servant leadership and we haven't really talked about that, but it really does take those leaders above you, encouraging you and, and giving you that pathway that says, take the opportunity, walk through the door, apply for the job. Um, because as you alluded to, the research does say, say that, you know, women will look at a job description and say, oh, I'm not qualified to do that, but they are qualified to do 10 of the 12 things. And a man will look at the same thing and only have five of the 12 things and say, I can do that. <laughs> and so while we don't want unqualified people in the position, women are more likely to rule themselves out of the job before they even apply. And I'm always saying to people, apply, and then you have a decision point. Don't make the decision before you have a decision to make. And so, you know, get the interview and then say, I don't know, I don't think this job is for me. But don't say the job isn't for you before you ever even apply if it's something that you think you might want to do. I guess to feel almost the necessity of moving forward or trying or putting themselves into action and worrying less about the outcome. And can you say more, you were just starting to Mm -hmm. speak to servant leadership, but tell me more about how that fits in with this whole conversation and, and you know, the importance of DEI, especially in, in leadership development. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so for me, I I consider myself a servant leader. I'm in healthcare. And before I knew the term, I knew I was a helper of other people and I wanted to see them succeed and, and move forward in, in whatever organization or whatever they wanted to do in life. Probably why I became a psychologist because of this desire of mine to help others. And for me, servant leadership is really about empowering anybody around me to do the best that they can with what they want to do and moving forward and whatever they desire to move forward in. You know, I'm not currently a supervisor, but when I have been a supervisor, one of the thoughts that I've always said and repeated is, if I do my job correctly, you will have my job, you know, and I will be in another position, but there's enough for all of us. And, you know, we're not limited to just what we see before us, but 
it can be multiplied if we allow it. And so really helping, you know, when I was a supervisor of students, really helping them to figure out what it is that you want to do. How can we get you there? What what can how what actions can we take? What action plan can we make to get you where you want to be? And it'll all work out and we will all be in the place that we need to be in. But I can help you in the ways that I can. And if I can't help you directly, I probably know somebody who can help you. And so really being a connector as well to opportunity is is a part of that. So, you know, for me, servant leadership is really about the way that you show up every day, about the compassion and grace that you have for others, about how you try to help people in their own careers, as well as their life, knowing about their life. So that that whole relationship and being a connector to the to the right people to help them move forward. This place where there's more than enough for everyone and you're helping whoever you're leading to really step forward and you know, take on more or even take on your own work because it's it's not it's not a threat to you it's mm-hmm. like everyone mm-hmm. is li- being lifted up when you're everyone is being lifted up yeah and including myself right because if you know in the next level I'll be able to do that for someone else and somebody's doing it for me and, and and really, it helps move the organization forward if all of us are working to the top of our licenses, to the top of our job descriptions and PDs. If we are doing that, then the organization is going to move forward. 